In our last video, we focused on dividing polynomials. And to do this, we focus on adapting the method of long division that we had previously seen with whole numbers and decimals, maybe from a class in elementary school or middle school, to these specific types of functions. But long division isn't the only way that we can do this. There is another algorithm called synthetic division that at least in many cases can work just as well, if not better. And this is gonna be the focus of today's video. Now, there are some differences to note, some limitations with synthetic division, most notably. In contrast, long division, we were able to divide really any polynomial. So we could divide by polynomials in the form x minus c. We could divide by polynomials in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. We could divide by polynomials that were cubic functions or whatever degree we wanted. Synthetic division, on the other hand, is limited just to this first case, just to dividing factors specifically in the form x minus c. So this is limited to dividing by factors of the form of the form x minus c. And you might say, well, if this method is limited in that way, why might we favor it over long division if long division is ultimately more robust and flexible? And the reason for this is essentially, as you may have noticed if you've done a number of practice problems with long division, is that that method can get somewhat tedious. Synthetic division, on the other hand, is generally a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. So often considered quicker and easier. And so as long as we understand those two main differences between synthetic versus long division, we can kind of decide which one is most appropriate for a given context, or even which one we're personally more comfortable with using, given that our problem satisfies the limitations of synthetic division. And so what exactly is this algorithm? Well, I think the best way to sort of describe how this works is to just walk through an example step by step and we'll see how it goes. And so what we'll do here is divide x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 5 by the factor x minus 3. And for our first step, similar to what we began with in long division, we have to write our polynomial in descending order. In other words, the exponents have to start from the largest exponent and then all the way to the smallest exponent as we go from left to right. So we'll write in descending order of exponent. And now in this case, of course, we already have that. We go x cubed, then x squared, then x, then the constant term. And so here we're already all set. But if this was rearranged, now would be the time where we need to write it in that order. Next, we're gonna need to list the coefficients of each term. So the coefficients of x cubed, for instance, and then x squared, and then x, etc. So list the coefficients of each term across a row. And so for instance, in our case, we can look at the coefficient of x cubed, which in this case is just one, or at least when it's not written, that implicitly means it's one. We can look at the coefficient of x squared, which is four. We can look at the coefficient of x, which is negative five, right? And it is important that we keep this negative with it. And then we can look at the constant term as well and write five. Then from here, we'll need to identify what the C term is from that X minus C factor that we're dividing by. So we need to identify C from the factor X minus C of which we're dividing. And in this case, right, if we think of this in the form of X minus C, we have x minus three, and so our c is gonna be three. And so what we'll do here is we will just put a little box so we can separate that value from the rest of these and write that at the beginning of our row. And so the coefficients will be mapped out here and the c will be placed here. Now, much like using this symbol here to represent long division, we can also kind of similarly draw a horizontal bar to help us organize our synthetic division process. 
And you'll see here that I've left a bunch of space here because we're gonna be writing numbers in a second row here. And this will bring us to the main piece of the process, which basically boils down to two repeating steps. The first is going to be to add by column. In other words, we're gonna start in the very first column here and add all of the numbers that are listed there. Now in this case, that's just one, right? And one plus no number that's listed here, so one plus zero is just one. And so we can bring that down here. And so our first step will always be to take that number in the first column and bring it down. Then from here, we'll take whatever we got from that number. So we'll take that sum, take the previous sum and multiply it by C. So and multiply by C. Right, in our case, our C is three, our sum was one, so that will be three times one equal to three. And we'll take that number and we'll write it in the second row here under the next column over. So we'll take the previous sum and multiply it by C and write in the second row of the next column. And these steps four and five will be repeated all the way through until we've reached the last column. And so we'll add down our second column and get four plus three equal to seven. And then we'll multiply our C, so three, times the result of that sum, so three times seven to get 21. And we'll take that number and write it in the second row of the next column. So we'll put it here. Again, repeating this process, we'll add going down. So negative five plus 21, which will give us 16. Then multiplying C, or in this case, three times 16, we'll have 48, which we can then write in the second row of the next column, only to repeat this process one more time, adding five and 48 to get 53. And now that we've reached the last row and last column, this will terminate our process. And so now that we've completed our synthetic division, all that's left for us to do is interpret the answer, interpret what one, seven, 16, and 53 each represent. And so basically what we'll have is this last number here will represent the remainder, right? So in this case, we have a remainder of 53 if this is equal to zero, so if this is equal to zero, that tells us we have no remainder. In other words, x minus c divides evenly. Our next one over is going to be our constant term, the term that's being multiplied by x to the zero. In other words, multiplied by one. Our next term over, as you might be able to guess, our linear term, right, the one that is multiplied by x to the first. And then the next one over will be our quadratic term. In other words, the one that's being multiplied by x squared. And if we had more terms, this would continue on and on. The next term would be multiplied by x cubed, then x to the fourth, and so on and so forth. And so essentially what each of these represent is either a remainder, in this case here, or a coefficient to one of the variables of our result from the division that we just did. And so this will allow us to conclude that x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 5 divided by the factor of x minus 3 is equal to 1 times x squared, or x squared, 7 times x, so plus 7x, plus 16, plus 16, plus a remainder of 53. And so just like last time with long division, we can write this as a remainder of 53 over x minus three, the quantity. We can write it as a fractional remainder. And so our final answer would be x squared plus seven x plus 16, plus a remainder of 53 over x minus three. 
And for the most part, that represents the process of synthetic division. Now we can take a look at one more example, um, which will have sort of a similar nuance to long division, particularly if we notice here, this is missing the x squared term. And so just like with long division, we'll need to use a zero as a placeholder. But otherwise, this will follow exactly the same way. We can take our coefficients of our expression x cubed minus 7x minus 6, just deciding to fill in for the 0x squared term. And we can line those up in a row. So 1 for x cubed, 0 for x squared, minus 7 for x, and minus 6 for our constant term. And then divide those by c. Now, in this case, it's going to be important to remember that we write the factor x minus c when we're doing division. So if we're adding 2, that's going to be the same as subtracting a negative 2. And so rather than dividing by 2 in this case, or having our value for c be positive 2, it would be negative 2. And so we'll place our negative 2 up in this little box here. We've got our coefficients listed out in our row here. And then we'll just leave some space for our second row before starting our process. And again, the main parts of this process will be in two steps. First, we're going to add down the column. And so we'll drop down this one in this first case here. And then we will multiply. And we'll repeat these steps over and over until we've concluded the process. And so in this case, we'll multiply our negative 2 times 1 to give us negative 2. Right? That's coming from our c here and this value here. And we'll take that result and write it in the second row of our next column. Now, repeating the process again, we'll add going down the column. And so 0 plus negative 2 is going to give us negative 2. We can then take that result and multiply it by c. So in this case, we've got negative 2 times negative 2, or in other words, positive 4. We can write positive 4 in the second row of the next column, and then once again add down the column. Negative 7 plus 4 is going to give us negative 3, and we'll take that result and also multiply it by c, also multiplying it by negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 3 gives us positive 6, and so we can write positive 6 in this spot here to then once again add down the column, giving us negative six plus six or zero. And we can note in this case that that zero at the end means we have no remainder. And so in conclusion, all that's left for us to do in order to determine the result of negative x cubed minus seven x minus six divided by x plus two is to use each of these values as coefficients of our variables. In other words, this will represent a constant term of minus three. This will represent our linear term, so negative two x. And this will represent our squared term, our quadratic term, or just simply x squared since it's just one. And so we have a final result then of x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now I hope you found this video helpful. Hopefully it gives you another tool in the toolbox when it comes to dividing polynomials. There are different situations where long division or synthetic division might be most appropriate or easiest, right? In the case of dividing by a quadratic or larger polynomial, long division will likely be the way to go. But if you're just dividing by a factor x minus c, then you may find synthetic division particularly handy. Otherwise, if you do have any questions, please reach out. I'm happy to help and have a great rest of your day.